Pete, Dave, congratulations. You made it through to the final round. To be crowned the Forged and Fire champion, you must forge an iconic blade from history. It's time to reveal what that weapon will be. Holy crap. The Crusader Sword. Dating back to the Middle Ages, the Crusader Sword was the European knight's weapon of choice as they conquered the Holy Land. This single-handed, medium-length longsword also contained a double edge that tapered at the end, making it the ideal weapon for piercing the emerging plate armor that was found on most battlefields. The most famous Crusader Sword was the legendary Excalibur, wielded by King Arthur. The Crusader Sword was also carried by the Knights Templar, who were highlighted in films like Kingdom of Heaven and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Good luck. We will see you in five days. My name is Peter Burt. The first sword that I made, I gave to my high school girlfriend. She was not very excited about it. My strategy here is to make a Damascus billet, which is a laminated bar made up of multiple layers of steel. And a jelly roll is a specific pattern in Damascus where you actually roll the steel up on itself, kind of like a cinnamon bun. Pretty tight. The jelly roll has reached the point that I need to get it into the hammer to squeeze it down on itself. Looks pretty clean along the edges now, so uh, we're gonna proceed to forging this out. I got plenty of width. That's nice and tight. I feel great about what I've made. And if Dave beats it, that means he's brought something incredible. I'm Dave Roeder. When I was 16, I followed the sound of an anvil, and I met a man that was forging a knife. Got to watch it being done, and I've been making knives ever since. I want to make sure that this is going to perform without fail. Everything's good there. I'm going to put the blade in, the oil. I'm going to pull it out, just enough for it to flash. Anytime that thing got hot in the forge, it would warp. I could literally watch it bend. This is called a three-pin straightening method. I'm going to either straighten this blade, or I'm going to snap it. I really don't like doing this. So luckily, the blade didn't break in the vise. I was able to fix the warp. Now, I got to get this sword finished. The handle is walnut, and my overlay is a leather band. I decided to put inside the handle a riser underneath the leather. It's pleasing to the eye, and it helps with the grip. Confidence level is pretty high. I'm really pleased with the outcome of this. I've got a great chance at this in the end with the judges. While the Crusader Sword was quite powerful and effective on foot and sword-to-sword -sword combat, there was a method of delivery that made it even more destructive. From horseback. That rider is going to use your weapons to attack that ballistics gel torso that's wearing a great helm, gorget, and tunic. Okay. I suggest we get out of the way. I'm very nervous. Full gallop on horseback. That's a lot of power to put into a sword. Dave, you're up first. Are you ready? I ain't going to get any readier. Three, two, one, engage. <laughs> nice hit. That is absolutely awesome. Pete, your sword's up next. Let's see some blood. I feel great that my sword held up well, but it didn't cut through the cloth armor. To assess the damage and perform the kill test, I'm going to hand you over to Doug. OK, Dave. It's got some weight to it. A crusader sword should feel a bit heavy in the hand. Slashing feels good. Let's see if it'll cut. OK. Oh. 
can see it points like a spear. Beautiful thrusting capability. It's a killer. Pete? So I'm now testing for the thrusting with length. It's got a lot of weight to it. Let's see what it's gonna do on a kill test. Let's see. <laughs> it will kill. All right, gentlemen. That concludes the kill test. Now we're gonna head back to the forge where we are going to perform the strength test. Gentlemen, a sword in combat went through extreme stresses. So to test this, I'm gonna take five blows against these femurs and see how far through we can get with each of your weapons. Okay. Pete, you ready? I'm ready. All right. And while I was chopping this, this ring up here, pretty rough on the hand. Okay. I'm just happy that my sword is still in one piece at the end of this. <laughs> Got about halfway through that bone, just blowing pieces off of it. And still has an edge. Good. Nice job. Thank you. Dave, you're up next. You ready? Sure. stress in that blade. No kidding. You can see the edge folded over. Yeah. Sort of bent right around that point of impact right there. You can see we chopped right through this bone. About three blows to crack that open. Well done. You've both been outstanding competitors through three rounds of competition. But and there can only be one Forged in Fire champion. Jay? Oh, Pete, that Damascus blade was beautiful. I mean, getting all those welds folded together, grinding that all evenly, heat treating it the way you did, it stood up to all the tests. You did a wonderful job on that piece of steel. I had a couple of issues with the way your handle was put together with that spacer. The spacer really started chewing into my hand. I just couldn't get a good grip up around the top of this sword. That's an issue. Comments for Dave? Well, Dave, even though the overall look of your sword and the design of your handle was very appealing, obviously it was a heat treatment issue. During the tests, your blade folded over, and that really bit you in the testing. Dave, I love the design of your blade. Very clean lines. Your handle felt very good in the hand. It's sharp, it thrust well. But in the end, it failed when we started slicing the bones. Pete. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Congratulations. Dave, your sword felt great in the hand. But when I used it on those bones, boy, it just bent right over the top. And a heat treat issue like that, we just can't let that through. Dave, you did an outstanding job. Please surrender your weapon. The judge's decision was what it was. And if I can't change it, then why worry about it? Pete, congratulations. You're receiving a check for $10,000. That's pretty nice. Yeah. How do you feel? I, I feel great. I feel really good. I think my wife, when we get to Hawaii, we're going to lie back and relax. She's had to put up with me being gone for this. She deserves it. <laughs>